Tēnā koutou katoa. Thank you for your commitment to keeping Aotearoa New Zealand's border workforce safe from COVID-19 by signing up for the Border Workforce Testing Register. The register is mandatory to use, so it's your responsibility to keep the register updated. The following video will guide you through the steps to get started using the register. There are two parts to this video, a guide to onboarding to the register and then a demonstration on how to use the register once you've onboarded. We're here to help, so if you have any feedback or questions, please email us at bwtrsupport at health.govt.nz. Right, let's get started with the onboarding process. Soon after you have returned the required information to the register support team, such as your company information and a list of users who will need access, you will receive an email that we will use to sign you into the register. The email you will receive is from Border Worker Testing and will say Welcome to Border Worker Testing in the, the subject line. This email will include your username, which is your email address, but with .bwt on the end of it, and a link to a website. If you have not received your email yet, and it has been longer than two days, please contact border-apps at contacttracing.health.nz. Copy and paste the link from the email into a Google Chrome web browser. This is the recommended web browser to use for this program. Other web browsers that can be used include Apple Safari and Mozilla Firefox. Information about other supported web browsers can be found at the address you see on screen. And you can also find this web address in our FAQ section. Please note that Microsoft's Internet Explorer is not supported. After pasting the link into Google Chrome, the Border Workforce Testing Register, Terms of Use will appear. Scroll down and read the Terms of Use. Select the Declaration tick box to say that you understand and consent to the Terms of Use. Select Next. You will now be able to set your password for the register. Type in your new password, making sure to follow the password requirements specified. Re-enter your password to confirm and select Change Password. You will now be taken to the Border Workforce Testing Register homepage. Now that your password is set up, you can log out of the register by selecting your name in the top right-hand corner of the page and choosing Log Out. You will be returned to the register login page. Feel free to bookmark this page as this is where you will log in in the future. Subsequent logins, however, will require a two-factor authentication process. This means you will use your mobile phone as an extra security step each time you log in. Please follow this first time login process to ensure you can properly log in to the register in future. Download the Salesforce Authenticator app from either the App Store for iPhones or Google Play Store for Androids. In this example, we're using an Android phone and the Google Play Store. Search for Salesforce and you should see Salesforce Authenticator or Salesforce Authenticator app appear in the search list. Select either of these options. The app icon has a white background with a blue padlock containing a white tick. Download and install this app to your phone. Open the app. You may be asked to take a tour of the application. You can skip this by clicking Skip Tour. Enter your mobile phone number and select Send. The Authenticator app will send a verification text to your phone. Open the text message and click on the link. You may be asked to open the link in either the Authenticator or your phone's web browser. Select Authenticator. Enter a four-digit passcode. You may be prompted asking you to allow location services. Select Continue and then choose whether you want to allow or deny the Authenticator app to access your phone's location. Select Add an account. A two-word phrase is generated. 
Either write down or remember this phrase as you will need it when logging into the Border Workforce Testing Register next time. In this example, the two word phrase is written album. Please note this two word phrase will be valid for five minutes. If your two word phrase expires, you'll be able to generate another two word phrase by selecting add an account again. Return to Google Chrome on your computer and the Border Workforce Testing Register login screen. Log in using your email address, remembering to include the .bwt on the end of your email and the password that you specified earlier. The Connect Salesforce Authenticator screen will appear. Enter the two-word phrase generated by the Authenticator app and select Connect. The Check Your Mobile Device screen will appear. The Authenticator app on your mobile will pop up asking you to connect account. Select Connect. A pop-up with account added and a green tick will appear on your phone. Select Got It. The Authenticator app is now set up for you to use for any future logins to the register. Back in the Google Chrome web browser on your computer, a green tick will also appear and you will be logged back into the Border Workforce Testing Register homepage. You will also be sent an email confirming the verification of your account. For subsequent logins, you will not need to repeat the two-word phrase process. Instead, each time you log into the register, you will need to accept the notification that pops up on your phone. To log out of the register, Select your name in the right hand corner of the register and a drop down will appear with the option to log out. If you forget your password, click Forgot Your Password on the sign in page to reset your password. If you are the access approver for your company, please follow these next steps to approve access to other users in the register from your organization. If you are not an access approver, you can skip to the demonstration part of the video. Once a new contact is created, you as your company's access approver will need to approve them. This access approval request will appear on your home page. In the access approvals box will be your new contact or user. To open this access request, click AA-. Once you can see the access request in the top right hand corner is an approve reject button. Click this. Click Next and the next page will give you the option of Read Write or Read Access. Read Write Access means the user can upload and export worker information. Read Access users can only view worker information and reports. It is your choice to assign the correct permission for each user. Click Finish and this user will be approved. If you have followed the above steps and are unable to log into the register, please contact border-apps at contacttracing.health.nz. Now that you have successfully onboarded and signed in, we can demonstrate how you can get started using the register. Here we have the Border Workforce Testing Register homepage. You will see here that we have five tiles with a breakdown of the testing statuses of border workers. Here we have the total active workers you have in the register. This tile shows how many workers have more than three days coverage from their last swab. This tile is the number of workers who have less than three days coverage from their last swab and who will be needing a swab soon. These are your overdue workers who have not had a swab recorded on their swab due date and are now non-compliant. This is the overdue bucket with a breakdown of how overdue your non-compliant workers are. Each of these tiles have a report at the bottom so you can easily check who was overdue and when their last test was due. You also have the option to export the dashboard stats with an overview of this information. The other section to note on the home page is workers requiring NHI information. Once you have uploaded your workers into the register, if they are unable to be matched to an NHI, you may be asked to provide additional information. If this happens, 
These workers requiring additional information will be displayed here to make sure that you are aware that additional information is needed. To find out what information is required, you will just need to click on the blue BHR number. There are other sections on the home page that could be helpful at a future date. For the purposes of this demonstration, you can ignore these for now as they're not essential to get started. But feel free to explore other sections as you get more comfortable with the register. The next tag along the top is the tab for employers and teams. Click this and click on your company or team name. If you don't see the team that is relevant to you, look for the drop-down box under Accounts at the top left. Click on that, then click on All Employer Teams. For the purpose of this demonstration, we will use the fictitious Wairu Stevedores Limited. Now you should be at your company or team profile. This is where you can find your border worker profiles, attendance, register contacts, and team structure. There are two ways to upload a worker or worker attendance, manually or with our spreadsheet templates, which are located in the Help tab. We will talk more about the Help tab later. The manual way to upload a worker is useful if you only have a few workers or are just adding a new worker. You will see a box named Border Workers. Click New on the top right-hand corner of this box. You just need to add in the worker's first and last name, date of birth, phone number, and email. Click Receive SMS slash email notifications. A staff ID and the worker's current compliance window. Once this is complete, click Save. This process is very similar with the spreadsheet template. The same information is needed. You can add in a team name if you like, or leave this blank. Add in the worker's first and last name, date of birth, phone number and email. Save this as a CSV MS-DOS file to your computer's filing system. Click Upload Files. Find your file and upload. You should get a green tick and an email confirming that the upload was successful. The same applies to attendance uploads. You can manually upload an attendance by finding the next box down in the company profile named Attendances and clicking New. Find the worker who attended an affected area by typing in their staff ID. Record what date they worked what facility or port they worked at, and what compliance window applies. Please note that you can only enter shifts from today's date or past dates, not future dates. Once this is complete, click Save. You can also do this in our attendance spreadsheet. Add the staff ID of the worker, the port or facility they attended, the date they worked in an affected area, or for consecutive days worked, you can add an end date, and the compliance window that applies. Save this in CSV MS-DOS format to your computer's filing system. Click Upload Files. Find your attendance upload file and upload. You should get a green tick and an email confirming that the upload was successful. Once your worker information is uploaded, a BHR profile is created for them. Here you can find the worker's information, attendance, compliance status, and test dates. To get to a worker's BHR profile, simply click on the code to the left of their name in the list of border workers. You may need to click View All to find all of your workers. Along the top, you can see the BHR number that we often use to identify a worker, what team they are in, their staff ID, test due date, and a flag representing their compliance status. Green means the worker is compliant. Red is non-compliant. Amber means the worker has not been NHI matched, but has an attendance uploaded. And no flag means the worker is not NHI matched and has no attendance uploaded. Below this is the worker's basic information along with their status in the register. This will be one of three things. Active. 
the worker has had a recent attendance uploaded for the last 7 or 14 days depending on their testing cycle. Inactive. The worker has not had a recent attendance uploaded in the last 7 or 14 days and is compliant. No longer employed. The employer has updated the worker's status to no longer employed. The worker's attendance and test dates during their time with this employer is stored, but no new test dates or attendances can be added. This can be applied to a worker by clicking the arrow at the top right hand corner and clicking update worker status. You can then choose to make this worker no longer employed. Under NHI information you will see four sections. NHI declaration. If the worker has given permission to share their NHI or National Health Identification Number for matching purposes, this box can be ticked and the NHI can be added under NHI Response. Person Profile Linked. This will be ticked when a worker has been linked to their NHI number. Require additional NHI information. This is ticked when the NHI team require additional information to match up a worker to their NHI. NHI Information Request. This is where the NHI team will ask an employer for the information they require for matching. This is usually a past address, confirmation of date of birth, or past names. This request will show up on your home page in the register. NHI Response. This box is for an employer to reply with the required information for the NHI team. Notifications is the phone number or email used to notify a worker about their test due date. Workers will be notified three days before they are due for a test and one day after their test due date if they have not had a test done to let them know that they are non-compliant. Employers are notified two days before a worker is due for a test. Compliance details are at the bottom of the profile and include the worker's testing cycle, attendance, the date when the last sample was collected, test coverage data and the due date for their next test. In the first instance, when a new worker is uploaded with their first attendance, the swab due date will be calculated from that first attendance date. Once the worker has been NHI matched, their past test dates will start to appear and their next test due date will now be calculated from their last sample collected date. At the top right you will see a button for a new note. Any information you would like to add for this worker can be added here. Click New Note and add a title at the top and then your note under this. Then click Done. Below this is where your worker's attendances will be stored. You can easily view any attendance and the details included in this box as well as being able to add new attendances here. This box is where test dates will start showing once a worker has been NHI matched. It will also tell you what type of swab was taken. Please note that test results will not be shown in the register as this is at the discretion of the employee and it is their choice if they choose to share this information with their employer. Along the top of the register screen you will see a tab called More. Click this to drop down and find the Help tab. Once you go into the Help tab you will see a file called BWTR Help Files. Right click on this and open in a new tab to access our user guide, Worker Upload and Attendance Templates, our most recent release notes, BWTR logging in instructions and a list of FAQs. For more information about the register, please contact us through our support email bwtrsupport at health.govt.nz. We'll be happy to answer any of your questions and start getting you set up in the register. He whakakapi, he waka eke noa tātou, tēnā tātou katoa. In conclusion, we are all in this together. Thanks everyone, and thank you for watching.